Tape reading is one of the most important skills a day trader can learn, and it can allow you to catch easy trades day in and day out. But most traders make a major tape reading mistake that makes them miss all the easy trades. In this video, we'll tell you how to avoid this lethal mistake and show you examples of how to read the tape correctly. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to develop numerous seven and even eight figure period traders. We hope you agree. This is a top YouTube channel to help you grow your trading account. Uh, this was a low float name. Uh, it's run. I think this is my first week when I started. Um, I think it was it ran from low fours to um, above the six, and then it went all all the way to like ten. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, where I traded was uh, after it broke half the day, it halted, limit up, and then it came back a little bit, and then there was a tape. There was a buyer at 6.50, 6.55, so I basically long there. And, and we're looking at the top left of the screen, I'm assuming. Yes, that's okay. correct. So we just had the resumption. Yeah, so okay. we just held, and then we just opened. As soon as it opened, it spiked higher. So How how strong do you, uh, if you were to square the tape, positive 10 to negative 10, how strong would this tape be to you? Oh, it's like 9.5. 9.5, like really strong, it's, right? Not was, excessive, yeah. but really strong. Yeah. Ten would be just clearing offers and immediately stepping up. Clearing offers immediately stepping up. This yeah. is still a strong tape. Yeah, yeah, it's strong, but it still get rejected. It tries yeah. higher. Yeah, I mean, this is how quickly this tape. It went to a ten when it cleared to six fifty. That was a ten. Yeah, and then immediately it's back down to an eight, where you can see the bidder stepping up in the twenties. Yeah, right. Twenty nine holds. Okay, what are you thinking here? Right now, I don't see any. Uh, like 29 hold, it went to 20 and then it came back immediately to 630. So I'm thinking, okay, 630 holds, I might see something, which it does right here. But still, like we are still pushing higher. Like if I enter here. Uh, yeah, why didn't you enter at 630? I didn't feel uh, comic enough in that okay. moment. Because I, I, I was waiting like hold, try, hold, try, hold, 630. It just went way quicker. Okay. What are you seeing on the tape now? We are uh, grinding higher slowly. It's it's not like uh, going down, holding. It's like it's holding and then stepping higher. Yeah. Stepping how would higher. you? Yeah. How would you score that? Uh, eight point five. Yeah, I would say eight, eight and a half. That's yeah. probably accurate. You yeah. know, it's not really able to step up above six seventy right now, but the bids are kind of consistently stepping up. The speed of the tape is really, you're going to have to be thinking almost, you know, with Justin, he does minute by minute analysis. Yeah. With the tape this fast and this much volume going through, you're going to have to do almost 15 seconds or five seconds by five seconds analysis Yeah. because of the, the aggressiveness yeah. of, of this tape, right? Yeah. So that's why I asked, why didn't you get in at 30? We saw the bid at 20, 29, 29, 29, just pay the break at 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 40 right or pay the break above 35 you know that's why we drill 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 where are your eyes and your eyes need to be either on the offer or on the bid because you want to recognize that change and i think we kind of missed one of those trades at 6 30 because our eyes weren't necessarily on the bid or on the offer they were on the bid but had we saw that offer lift you could have taken it and you could have just ridden it up as it kind of goes now it's at seven what do you think you do with this trade? Right now? Um, I don't know. I don't think I will enter right now. Only way I will enter maybe break of seven for momentum. But why? Still, I will. It came be. from 630, right? Yeah, I don't. It's, At that it's point, already it's extended. Yeah. It's already extended. Like, I, I wouldn't enter right here. Like, mm -hmm. if I will have to pick one trade, maybe that momentum. But right now, we extend it and the tape is still strong. I'm thinking, okay, if you pull back a little bit and then if I find a buyer, I'm just going to buy there. And then risk the momentum basically almost like risking the buyer rather than a level i'm like my risk is buyer like if that buyer steps down pause the tape 
This is one of the most common mistakes really? people make. Especially, and it happens on every single time frame. It especially happens as traders recognize a moment where there's, uh, recognize that there's edge in a setup, but haven't quite closed that gap between your recognition of edge in a moment, in a setup, and your ability to process it real time. It's like, um, you play basketball, right? Yeah, so it would be like um, that little half step that you need to take in order to get free for a really good shot, right? There's one thing about beating somebody to a spot, right? And you know how to get to a spot and then take the shot, right? As as you trade against or play against better players, the players, the, the distance that you have is going to be tighter, right? Yeah. And the reality is if you beat some to a spot, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a clear shot as the competition gets better. You have to almost like get that little bit of a move to get you that extra little tiny bit of space, right? Yeah. And if you don't, they're going to make it really, really difficult and it's probably a lower probability shot that you're taking, right? Not because of your ability to take the shot from that spot, but because of the, the circumstances around it, right? So there's that gap that tends to exist, right? And it takes a minute to figure it out. The gap that I'm talking about specifically here is you're describing a really good trade. Yeah. It's just a trade that happened at 630. Yeah. <laughs> and you're talking about it now at 670 of if I see this, we saw that. Yeah. You have to know that we saw that moment. Taking it here has much worse EV. It doesn't mean it's still not a really good trade. It's just we already saw that moment happen on the tape. We already saw the trade that you're trying to make. And it, this could turn out to be the best trade you make all day. Yeah. We still already saw it. And where we saw it was the, the highest EV moment. Yeah, it's extraordinary. That's right, yeah. So we have to train ourselves to recognize that because otherwise we're going to miss so much because we're going to be thinking about what happens so much later when it's comfortable for us to yeah. be thinking about it, when we've had time to process it, all that stuff. But we're never going to really close that gap. And we're always going to miss that really, that truly the best moment. Because now you could be out of a lot of it into, you know, that kind of spray higher in towards seven when you were like, oh, maybe I'll pay for momentum. And I'm thinking literally in my mind, I'm like, why would we pay for momentum through seven? It just came from 630 where that actual break was. If it, maybe it'll go up to like 720, maybe once in a while it'll LRP up above seven. Yeah. Most of the time, though, even if it breaks seven, it's going to get a flush yeah. somewhere. And so you could be exiting into that, setting up your next trade because we already saw how this stock is trading, which is press, 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 can't press right to the upside. Yeah, no, definitely. That's. I guess that moment was way harder than the one that I did. The one that I entered, it came to 655 holds. Holds came, hold. I'm like, okay, there's a like, it was way easier to see than it's much easier. 630. Yeah, it's yeah. much easier. But your EV is, is so much better way lower, yeah. in that 630. Yeah, and if yeah. you're not aware of it and you're not taking the time to study that 630 yeah. moment, you're just not going to get better at it. Yeah. I'm, this is a super fast example. But this is a very, very common mistake that we see in traders where you actually have a moment to enter, but then you wind up taking the trade later. And it can happen over minutes, it can happen over hours, it can happen over days for swing traders. Um, you know, minutes for scalpers, hours for, for trade to hold traders. But it's like you actually missed the, the real trade. And then you're trying to make all these other trades, which still can be valid trades. They're just different trades. Yeah. And that's why we work on stuff like this. So we don't miss the real trade. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Okay. Really cool. Let's go ahead. So the first time uh, momentum kind of slowed down here in the 80s. I mean, it's indecision at this point, right? Yeah, 75 did hold a little bit, but at this point, like you said, EV is lower. Like, it has to be. Could you have taken low. the 75? 71. Uh, could I? No, I don't. I still don't. And the fact that we didn't 
like we close that candle in the same range in the previous candle tells me there are sellers there okay right here i was thinking uh after momentum we slow down one candle and the sellers are up there the buyers are in the low of that candle and if there are shorts getting squeezed if we come down on that last candle where the buyers lift it up i'm thinking if it comes down there come down a little bit and then rebuts again i can just get in there because all the shorts thinking okay it broke that one minute okay that's it it should follow through and if it doesn't it's like almost stock trader like they're stuck and the yep. buyers are a bit more then i'm like okay i can get in there and then push higher particularly because what's actually happening right now people are getting squeezed highlighting what's happening on the shortest time frame right now uh, buyers and sellers are fighting in the they're fighting time it's consolidating yeah yes yeah. it's a consolidation yeah. that is what's happening on the shortest time frame right now yeah okay. yeah so basically entering in the blow of the range yeah And even in here, the weights made me feel like 76.5. There are so much buyers. They're like almost everywhere. Doesn't feel like it's going to crack, does it? No. 60 and then goes higher. 60 and How then. does the tape feel? How would you score the tape? Right now, I will score 8 because when we came out of the halt. I wouldn't score it an 8. No, like right like now. Way low. Right now. Oh, oh, right now? Oh, no. No, bad right now. Like, uh, like, like six. I don't know. It's yeah. on, way on the short side. Yeah. I will score higher. Yeah, like it will exactly. Be, yeah, it feels like it could give it up at any point yeah. and go all the way back down. Right. Yeah. So it's a negative. Negative. Like yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a negative six. Yeah, that's yeah. the feeling that you actually want for the long potentially. Though, yeah. If it doesn't give it up. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I'm I'm I want people to think like myself, right? If I'm gonna short this, it's it's it looks like short. And then after the rebit, people look at short and now the tape changed. It, now it's long and you got stuck and then there's a momentum I can expect because short has to cover and then the longs, okay, that's the momentum. There's yep. like other participants can yep. uh, go with me. I like one thing you said, you can just keep the tape running, but I like one thing you said previously, which was you recognized it's a consolidation. There's a battle. You want to be in from the low of the range. It looks like you just got in. I saw a flicker on a uh, chart. So it looks like you bought 50. Yeah, yeah. You see that it came that low of the range and yep. then it rebid. Yeah, that's yep. what I, I got in. Yep, okay. That's smart. As soon as it rebids, you're bidding off the low of the range. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and now as far as risk... Uh, Especially in this type of tape, I think watching the tape and deciding like, okay, the momentum is dead or, oh, there are big uh, big sellers rather than risking like specific level. Like my heart stop, probably that halt level, the six, like if it spikes down, I will get out. That's the worst case. Right? That's the worst case. I'm like, I have to have that. But as far as like manual decision, I'm just watching the tape at this moment. Like I want that battle to continue in that range. And as soon, I, every, each time it comes down, I want some type of rebid. Like I'm okay consolidation there and they are keep rebidding. I think I will get out if it starts to like fade slowly. What changes? What what needs to change for you to, to add risk then? Because you're right. If it cracks and then can't really rebid, if it cracks all the way down, you're, you're out. If yeah. it cracks but then can't really rebid, you're out. If it starts to downtrend, you're out. Yeah. You're... you're Trading against essentially, like you said, a, a buyer being there, not trading yes. against a level. Right? Yeah. So, what gets you to add risk? Uh, I. Because based off of what you said, you can't be sized. No, you not, can't be full size. Not right now, because I think it's still speculative in a way. I'm entering in a kind of risk area. I'm expecting some type of volume to pick up their consolidation. Volume. So this tape is negative six. Maybe it's even negative seven because maybe eight, negative eight because they're really pressing it here. Yeah. Right. They're not letting it lift. Yeah. But I, so you can be in long on a negative eight tape. Yeah. Off the expectation that that hasn't changed. But 
where can you actually really get size on a trade? When the volume picks up and then we start to pick it up and then goes higher. When the tape shifts from negative to yeah. positive. Yeah, negative that, to positive, that, yeah. That shift, when the, yeah. the score that you have on the tape shifts back to positive, that is the that is the change that really good traders are just waiting for. Yes. And traders yeah. like you who are, who are picking off the lows of the range, you can yeah. do that with small yeah. size. Yeah. But you don't actually have an ability to put risk on it until you see, and it looks like we potentially are seeing it now. Yeah. We're seeing the bidders up, and what we would want to, what would you specifically want to see? Follow you know, through right now. Follow through. Follow okay. through. Yep. Just the worst case, I wouldn't want wick up and then immediately come back to low of the range. Like right what now. What would that tell you about the tape? I, I will get out. Yep. Like, yep. That's it. It would tell you that the bidders, that it was a short term yeah. squeeze and then the sellers are actually yeah. just really in control. Yeah. It would confirm that that negative seven. And negative there eight. was the big bidders, right? Uh, 82. Yeah, right there. Yep. That gave me, okay, if you're going to break, um, I actually could have added right here. That was a. Mistake. I think you could have added well before this. Yeah. I think you, I think the only add spot was when that tape changed off of the 50. I think adding here is you're chasing, which yeah. is fine. Right now I felt chased and then it immediately came back. Yep. And then that bidder is still there. So I added so, right here. Yep. So you can add against that bidder. Yeah. Yep. I, 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 I added the fact that. that it sprayed up and that bidder was there. And you can't quick shares on this. You have to be your quick shares have to already be in your system because you're you just lost 10 cents on that. Yeah. Right. So, so you have to have fingers on the keys ready to hit. And same thing on the on the way out. Like, what are you going to do if it drops on you? Are you going to quick shares in order to like, like you have to have this these decisions made faster in a tape that's this fast. The only reason why we're talking about this is because this is the game you want to play. Yeah. And you can't be looking at other parts of your screen. You can't be moving your your hands can't be moving to your mouse. No. Like this is. This is your time to shine and you can't be talking to girls in the stands, you know, like you can't be, can't be doing any of that stuff. This is your time where your eyes are on the box, yeah. your hands are on the keys. I took off the one fourth here. Again, you can't be touching the quick yeah. shares. It has to be automated. You have to have a quarter cell key, half cell key, quarter cell key, you know. Like you have to be thinking about that. So you're taking off into the LRP. There are other people that are adding into it, but it didn't halt. What's the next thing you're thinking about? That right there actually scared me. The fact that it didn't halt, I was expecting, okay, it's going to just spike down. I'm going to get out. Like I was about to hit and then the, I didn't really see that much before. It Stuff like that, okay, it's going to spike down. It holded there and then it went higher again. Like 39. So this so. is a rebit. So this is a really unique strategy. And then is, is I, you see it LRP. It yeah, you see it LRP. Yeah. And again, like you're losing seconds that are so precious by needing to type in, uh, I want to put in my share size. And then I'm going to go back and I'm clicking on this and clicking on this. And nope, boop, in, out, in, out. And like you need to practice this. Like if I were you, I'd be practicing it after hours. I would be practicing not touching my mouse in a very important moment like this. Um, like being able to do everything as quickly as can, as you can, you know, their, their, their speed on the keys, things that you can do and you can warm up with. Bella has a really good blog post about it. Like yeah. from way back in the day, like if you just search our blog and find it, like it's really good about, you should be doing this exercise every day. And it includes stuff like this. You should be, you should not have to set a key. You should know you should be able to tab to different exchanges and put offers on different exchanges in order to be able to make sure that you're getting filled at different times. And you should all be able to do that really fast. Yeah. It's like the dribbling of, 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 of this, like yeah. you need to be able to dribble. Yeah. I actually did set up after this. I talked with James about the, some of the breaking news trades. He showed me the way like he will like click multiple times. He has his keys. Yeah. This was the, like the first week, yeah. I, I think two weeks ago, I set it up more useful and I, the, it's a little bit funny. I thought I had to like, you had to click that box each time and, it, and I didn't know. So I was like, make sure I was clicking there, like the order going through that box. Yeah. So that was a bit challenging too. Yeah. But you should be practicing your yeah. keys every day, multiple times a day, every day. You'll hear Bella when I'll get down on the desk, you'll hear this. That's him. He types in the symbol that he's going to trade. 
Yeah. Every single time he sits down, that's a part of his reset. And then you'll hear him go through his orders, and it's like, do, 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 click, do, 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 click, and it's him changing the order type, and it's him getting those reps in. And you'll hear this every time he sits down. It's like like this this rattle, rattle, rattle. That's what he's doing. Is It's his routine, and he's practiced it hundreds of, probably hundreds of thousands of times now. Because every time he sits down to trade, you'll hear him do that. And you'll see other traders do that too. Some of the fastest traders on our desk. You'll hear him warming up on the keys, yeah. like when they sit down. And others are a little, you know, more methodical, but the fastest traders are just like you hear the difference in the speed uh-huh. on their keys. If you sat next to James, it would be like <clears throat> you know, like like you hear it. It's amazing. Yeah. So you need to be that is your competition, is yeah. you need to be at their level or better. Yeah. That's helpful. I didn't know they. It's like basketball game. You practice before the yep. For the game. And then we go uh, the mid up here. Okay. Let's take through the take it to the final exits. Okay. Actually, this uh, right after the halt, I got out. Uh, I'm thinking, I was playing three center in my mind. We're gonna get out of the halt. First move up. I'm probably gonna let it go until the tape slows. If we spike down and hold there, I'm out. If we spike down and immediately rebit, I'm still going to hold and then probably sell in the move up. So that was a three thing I was thinking. And uh, okay, uh, we got that open. So we opened, we did came down. I was about to hit there, but immediately we rebit. I was expecting that if it's spike, I'm gonna wait one second, two second, I'm out. So I didn't like the fact that it's still holding, but it's not like pushing so high. And then that immediate up move. Uh, I think I get out, right? I mean, it's steep, right? Yeah. So like it should have flushed through 850. Like I was waiting like flush through eight and then like go eight, like. Go extreme, right? Extreme. 10 yeah. out of 10 tape. I get out there. Yep. Yeah. So. I think this is a really good trade. I think it's exposed, and this is why we watch tape. Not just to recognize what's going on on the tape, to, but to speed up our ability to see and to then practice with your fingers of, okay, I'm in. Okay, I'm making this decision. And it will be clunky at first, and this is what prevents a lot of traders yeah. from doing that is because – they're like, I want to be here, but I'm here right now. Yeah. The only difference between the fastest traders on our desk and where you are in this tape yeah. is practice. Yeah. It's not in your ability to recognize what's going on in the trade. Most of us could read the tape and see, oh, this and that. It's the ability to recognize it and then hit it. Yeah, no, that's helpful. I, I watched the tape a couple of times. I didn't see the 630. I thought, I guess when you say like uncomfortable, that opening halt after the halt that's like the most uncomfortable because it, it can just spike down seeing that 630 and but it just didn't it's same so thing same powerful. thing at 650 yeah it could have spiked down it just didn't yeah. so as soon as you see it lift i'm in you're talking about making a full trade yeah. before you even saw a, before you even had a good trade right. yeah. imagine being up like half a stop or three quarters of a stop before you even got the pull in that you thought was like this amazing trade. Oh, definitely. I, I learned a lot. The two things I didn't recognize, that 630 and then uh, my slowness on the tape. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I mean, I'll pick on, I'm going to pick on you really hard until you get this right. Because there's going to be a time we come in here to do a tape and yeah. you're going to have to teach me how to be faster on the keys. Uh, that's my hope. Yeah. But for right now, get faster on your keys yeah. and leave your mouse alone in a fast moment. No, that's, I'm going to work on that. Uh, put... Quarter health, like seventy five percent, then hit those or five percent, ten percent. There, all these different things, yeah. you know. Yeah, because you'll I see. still do quick shares, like even on the breaking news. That's that slow down. It's it yeah. ta- first of all, it takes your eyes off the box yeah. because you have to look at the quick shares box. Yeah, and it's just it, if you have to move your hand off that that is such valuable time. If you have to reach over to get the mouse or even you know reach over to to do something with the quick shares. So they do matter and they matter more in your confidence in your ability to execute it because when you've practiced it and you have the confidence, you're just going to do it. You're not going to worry about it.
All right? Yeah, thank you. No, that was really good. All right, good one. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and getting access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.